All right. Welcome back to the podcast. One of my favorite things about podcasts is when people listen to Facebook lives, they jump on, jump off. So shows way more views than actually what's really true reality. But on podcasts, people binge and they listen and they actually pay attention. I feel like they get a lot more out of it. I just read a statistic that the average podcaster makes over $250,000 a year, like the average listener, which is just absolutely insane. And then I love YouTube as well, because right, it's, we've got a, our next guest here. He did the whole YouTube university is actually his best mentors ever and how he crushed it. So let me give a quick introduction. Our next guest is Alex Morton, if not the top, because it's always hard to say top. I don't know everyone's exact, but definitely one of the top, top, top earners right now in the network marketing profession. I believe he's one of the very best, if not the best speaker. Uh, the guy was just born with charisma. And then of course he learned a lot more on how to how to convey that message. And all around just a good human being and great leader. He's one of those people that uh, just super trustworthy, extremely loyal, which is one of my favorite parts about him. But I've known him now for probably seven years. So you get to hear from one of the very, very top earners in the whole profession. And also one of the guys that I've seen stay in the trenches the longest. Most people go crush it for a year or two, and then they're done. And this guy is just, con- he doesn't need to. Constantly, constantly giving back. So the last thing I'll say is this. I was looking back through um, some texts that I have saved because I have like all my texts saved throughout the years. It's like this backup. And I sent this text to this guy named Mark Patterson. And I think I'll have to look back at the date. It was 2006. And I said to him, Alex Martin will become the top earner in the entire profession one day. It was kind of cool. It gave me like the chills when I read it. I'm like, dude, that's nuts. Like I sent that to him. So Alex, that's like the, that's like the short introduction. Glad you're home. So we can finally do this because you're in a different country every single day, my man. Maybe you can tell him a little bit about more about your background, how many countries you've been to, how many countries your business in, the good stuff. And then we're going to get into the nitty gritty, my man. Amazing. Amazing. Well, hey, Rob, definitely excited to be here with you. You know, we definitely go, um, you know, way back. And that's uh, that's really cool. You, you predicted the future. You, you are a fortune. You are a fortune teller. So I want to give you your flowers, man. You're incredible. Uh, you're definitely somebody that's got it all. You know, I, I teach our younger guys right now, go find mentors that have everything, not just the car or the house or the money. But, you know, for me being married, it's like, you know, good marriage, great kids, great career. So you're definitely doing amazing things um, on the planet, man. So that's awesome. And I'm excited to be here. You know, I, I've been in this profession now since 2011 and it's been a whirlwind and it, and it feels like I signed up yesterday when I signed up in 2011 and now it's 2022, almost 20, 2023, it's crazy. And the world has drastically changed. And if you're listening in right now, understand you are in the best possible place, profession and vehicle to create financial abundance and freedom. You know, I've got friends in all these different professions and organizations. And I can tell you that what it is you and I do every single day, providing valuable services and fixing people's problems around the world, this is the best place you can create you know, freedom uh, for you and your family. So my story is I grew up in Columbus, Ohio in a small town, always had big dreams, big goals, wanted to do something big with my life, fell into this profession at 21, no network, uh, no net worth, uh, pretty much broken a dorm room. And like Rob mentioned, you know, YouTube University w- was really my first mentors. I, ha- I had one specific guy show me what was possible, but then I got on there and, and I studied the greats and, and I studied the way they moved, the way they spoke, the way they, you know, moved people, inspired people. Right. And I just took from them. I applied it into my life and business and long story short, it's been an amazing ride so far. Well, lots of things. What's crazy is I think back to this and, you know, a lot of times you just do some reflection and try to figure out like, where did I learn this or learn that? And my goal is I think the ability to learn how to learn is the greatest ability one can have. Someone else can do it, right? It's different if someone says I can jump like six feet, that's a little bit different, but if it's a mental capacity, if someone else, and a lot of times we know the mental does affect the physical tremendously, but if it's a mental capacity, if someone else can do it, I can do it. So the ability to learn how to learn the greatest ability one can have. And I think back to different things I learned from different people. And one of the top things that I actually learned from you is, is the power of branding. 
I mm. believe that you were the first person that I know of that did an incredible job of understanding the power of your brand. And now everyone always talks about you are your brand, you are your brand, right? And at that time, I really wasn't posting consistently on, on social media at all when I first met you. And that's when I'm like, oh my goodness, the younger generation, it's a huge deal. And, and you probably don't even know this, but that's when I started posting every single day, wow. created like big Facebook groups, started really focusing on, you know what? You get paid based on your brand. Mm. And so I really started focusing on that now, right? YouTube channel, podcast been listened to by 130 countries. And all of it was like branding, branding, masterminds that I do. And it, it literally started from, and you never knew this. I didn't tell you this till now, but it started from just watching. You didn't tell me. I just saw what you were doing. You, I saw you were doing like Gary Vee style that no one else was right. doing except for Gary Vee of videographer, right? Following you around and all of that stuff. And you just kept putting out consistent content of, real attraction marketing, not fake, where everybody felt like they knew you the first time. I felt like I knew you the first time I met you. I'd already had known you. So looking at all of that, and obviously different people at different places, maybe they're brand new and they're overwhelmed or they're scared, or maybe they're experts are like, that's not my thing, whatever. I don't, I don't really care. I just wanted to point that out because we can all learn from every single leader something. But You've seen companies fail. You've seen companies shut down. You've seen companies that are the wrong fit for certain people, right? You've seen it all. So based on all that that you've seen, if someone were to ask you like what you feel like the top thing is for someone to have success, what is it and how can one develop it? Yeah, I definitely seen a lot in these last 12 years. And it it might be difficult to say one thing, but... A few things, I think it all comes down, like you said, the spiritual side and the physical side. And the spiritual side, I can say it has to do with your self-image and and really your belief system. And on the physical side, it is the work. You know, obviously, uh, I was very fortunate to meet my mentor, uh, Bob Proctor, in 2011. And I stayed with him as a coach and and a friend until literally the day he passed away last year and went to heaven. And he really gave me the foundation on the spiritual side because you can be the best opener, presenter, and closer, and you can know all the scripts and you can know how to uh, make cold phone calls and how to introduce your warm marketing stuff. But if you don't have the right self-image, it's going to be difficult for you to go to the top, right? And the the idea of the self-image is if you're listening in 130 countries around the world, it's you building the image in your mind of the person you want to become. And when I got this information at 21 years old, at first I said, you know, I don't believe that stuff. It sounds like witchcraft or hocus pocus. But then I started studying, you know, the top, top people. I can still remember the names of the men that I studied when I was 21 years old. And they all talked about how they built the image in their mind of the network marketing leader they wanted to become. So I would say that's a big deal. You got to really see yourself where you want to be with the good you desire. And then you got to go out there and do the work. You know, I'm a big uh, proponent and fan of the law of attraction. I I believe it's true. I believe in the laws of the universe. However, you can read all these, you know, every book under the sun. But if you don't go out there and actually open your mouth and talk to people, right, whether it's social media, whether it's in person, uh, you're you're not going to build a business. So I would say master the fundamentals and the basics of building the business, inviting, opening, prospecting, how to do an effective presentation, how to, you know, edify your upline, how to do effective third party. I mean, there, there's a lot of skills over there. I know Rob has given you guys that over the last couple of years, but on the spiritual side, that's between you, you and you, you got to look yourself in the mirror and begin to work on yourself, your self-image, your belief system. You, you, you mix and match those two together. You're going to bake your cake of six, seven, eight figures, whatever you want. I've seen this work for 12 years in countries like coast from Costa Rica to Nigeria to Thailand. So I know this stuff works, but you have to make a commitment and take full responsibility for you to work on the skills and the fundamentals and the basics and also work on this self-image and belief system. And over time, you're going to get to where you want to go. I love that. I, I look at um, a couple of different things. You know, I, I love that you touched on the spiritual side because I don't think that's talked about enough. And I've seen that growth and I've watched that growth um, with you, which has just been super cool from where you were to where you're at. And I know you've got a really good memory. We both do. So you probably remember this training because I remember it. a lot of things just come back to me now as we're talking. So we haven't had been able to have a good conversation. Yeah, for a while. Yeah. We ran into each other at events, but 
um, I remember this training that I did and that for you, it was something that, you know, stood out and it's similar to what you're talking about. And it's a training that I did on the three versions of yourself, the public version of yourself, the yep. private version of yourself, the secret version, right? The public, everybody knows and they see. The private, what I joke around now and that training's evolved is it's like the hangry version. All <laughs> your friends and family see when you're hungry and angry, right? Right. right. And so they're going to see like that version of you, but the secret self that, that Alex is talking about right here, that's the most important one to more closely align with your public, public and private. Because if your public is always the highest, if your public's a nine, your private's a seven, and then your secret's a four, and you got these demons right inside you, that's, that's the energy you're going to put out. Like you go listen to Alex, you see him on stage or you see him on social media, like the energy that he puts out and it's, And it's different kinds of energy for different people, but it's still the same energy, meaning some people are going to be louder. Some people are going to be quieter. But what's the best, most energetic, bold version of you? That's what's going to attract people. People are attracted to that. And so look at closely or more closely aligning your public and your private and the secret versions of yourself. Everything else happens and it comes in harmony. Well, I've got a lot of other questions I want to get into. Before I get into that, I do not want to forget um, I saw this on social media and I actually asked Alex, I'm like, is there any way we can get on a podcast, man? I want to promote this because I've seen him in person. I was there at the very first um, just generic event when his book came wow. out and yeah. he launched yeah. it in Vegas. And so I've seen it. I've seen the energy. I know the guy's the real deal, what he's done, true wealth is ability. It's not what you have in the bank. And I've seen the all-star cast he has. I mean, he's got guys like Ed Milet and Grant Cardone, who I know is one of his good friends, and Dan Fleischman, and and six or seven other huge, massive, insightful leaders that are actually the real deal. I know that's in Miami, January 19th to the 22nd of this next year, 2023. Maybe tell them a little bit. It's breakthecodeevent.com if you guys want to go find it online, and, and the value you're putting there is is just insane. Maybe tell them a little bit more about that before I get into some questions. Yeah. Well, the background story is um, my mentor, Bob Proctor and I were actually planning to do an event together. Uh, He wanted to call it the mentor and the millionaire. I actually have not talked about this publicly. So we were planning this event. He actually went and saw venues in Vegas and we were getting ready to sign uh, contracts. And then, you know, C-19 uh, transpired and the world shut down. And then we just remained, you know, in touch. And then, you know, some things went south for, for Bob's health. And I was in Barcelona, Spain, uh, the day he passed away, his wife, Linda, uh, told me, he said, you know, Hey, before you see this on Instagram, I want to let you know, Bob passed away today. And it was very emotional. It was obviously a tough day, you know, crying, obviously one of my closest people in the world. Right. And this is a true story. I, I, I'm standing outside of a restaurant lounge. I'm looking out over the balcony in the big R that he has in all of his trainings. I kid you not. I am literally looking dead on of this huge R because Renaissance Hotel just rebranded their logo. And they literally have the same R that Bob's used in his training since like 1960. So I'm like, whoa, I had this crazy energy come through me that night. I, I call my team and I say, we're doing, we're doing an event. I don't know who the speakers are going to be, but I want you to look for venues. And within basically two weeks, we said, it's going to be called break the code event. I'm going to be doing my talk on, you know, how I earned 30 million before 30 and all the things that I teach. But I said, I'm going to bring in people that have influenced me, you know, Ed Milet, uh, $800 million net worth family guy, obviously Grant Cardone, Stormy Wellington. I think she's the highest paid female, if not the highest top five, right? Rob Deerdick. So we're bringing in a lot of great people. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but yeah, it's going to be amazing. And, and tickets are definitely very affordable. Early price is still going on and it's going to be, you know, a two and a half day uh, intensive event at the Miami Convention Center where we're going to be able to shift your paradigm, get you in the right state and with the right information and go crush 2023. Because right now people need people need leadership in this world and people need the right information. And that's what we're going to bring and deliver uh, in January in Miami. Love it. That's a, that's a do not miss event. And we know that, you know, leaders are born at events and we hear these cliches, cliches are cliches for a reason because they're timeless principles. And so when you look at these type of principles and concepts, you don't know who and what, obviously the people that you meet, the collaboration that happens, but then the content as you go and you say, you know what, perfect way 
to start your year. So I look at it and I look at someone like you and I'm not trying to be rude, but there's a lot of people in this profession I look at and I'm like, you know what? Right place, right time. Love them to death. And that's one of the cool parts about the profession. Yeah. But as I said earlier, true wealth is ability. It's not what you have in the bank. And then I look at people like you, and as long as it was a legitimate company, legit, legitimate product or service, I know that you would become the top earners in any company. And so that comes with, you know, obviously there's a lot of poise, a lot of confidence, um, but that's not just because you've done it now. I believe that you had that before. You knew who you wanted to become as you talk about self-image and you knew who you were going to become. I mean, I remember your mom telling me, like, she just knew, she was just like, Hey, Alex can be the next Tony Robbins. And it was just so cool. It wasn't even like, maybe it was like, she just, she just knew. And that was so fun to see, by the way, I was talking with your dad on Instagram the other day too. I always love, he's following me. I follow him. So he's awesome. Your parents are amazing. But with all that said, you're huge on mindset. Like that's the thing I feel like you've always talked about most is the bulletproof mindset. So if someone feels like, well, my mindset's okay, or maybe it's good and it can be better, right? Or it's really bad and I'm struggling and I keep hitting that ceiling over and over and over again. What are some things that you would give them to help them to improve that mindset? Because we know we're not going to out earn unless we get lucky. True else ability now we have in the bank. You don't want to get lucky. We know we're not going to out earn that mindset. So how do they change that self-image? How do they change that mindset? Well, you're right. It all begins. It all begins in the mind. And I, I, I believe 95% of your success, 95% of you hitting that certain level in the compensation plan is going to have to do with your mentality because there are tens of thousands of reps and IBOs and distributors and network marketing that actually do know how to build the business and they, they, they can do certain skills and they, you know, they stay consistent, maybe not too long, but they do it for a little bit and they don't get the right results. And then you see people get involved and it's just, they just go to the, they go to the top, you know, pretty, pretty fast. Some of them, right? Like, like, how does that, how does that happen? And I believe it is the, the mindset, right? So when I think about mindset, number one, I think about this idea of attitude, right? We all know your attitude in the business is going to determine your altitude in this business. And it's easy to have a good attitude when things are going great. It's easy to have a good attitude when, you know, your, your leaders are bringing in uh, 300 or 400 customers every single week and there's ranks popping up and it's completely on fire. But what's your attitude going to be like when you have a pullback, when you have a retracement? You know, I think every company and I'm, I'm a very open book, right? I think every company in network marketing after C19 experienced a little bit of a retracement. So how have you been leading through some of the challenges going on? in your organization. So number one, I would say building this, you know, bulletproof attitude, no matter what's going on, whether it's good, good days, great days, or bad days, you got to be the leader speaking vision, speaking, speaking in inspiration. And then number two is what are you choosing to focus on? Like, what are you choosing to focus on? Right. Are you, are you focused on the good in the world or the bad in the world? Are you focused on the good in your life? Or the bad in your life, you wake up in a, you know, a grateful state or you, you wake up in a fear, anxiety, I'm not good enough state. And you say, well, Alex, how do I build this? It's through repetition, right? I, I wasn't just at 21 years old. I didn't, I didn't have all of the things I have today, because, I, but I've worked on myself. Like standing in front of the mirror and doing affirmations. Some of you say that's weird. I don't think that's weird. Because if you study Andrew Carnegie, Napoleon Hill, Earl Nightingale, Bob Proctor, in Think and Grow Rich, they talk about affirmations. What you say to yourself matters. Rob talked about, you know, the three the three selves, public, private, uh, and secret. That secret self is you got to be talking to yourself. You have to be your biggest fan, your biggest cheerleader, and you got to believe in yourself at a a massive level. So choose what you are, you know, focus on focusing on every day and be conscious about it. And then I would say number three, it's the it's the whole idea again of building this winning self image, and you can do that by taking a pen and taking a piece of paper and writing out life as you would like it to be. See, some of you may say these are old school principles, but those are the principles that work, ladies and gentlemen. You know, you see different trainings and different gurus all over social media, but they all point back to specific principles that have worked for hundreds and hundreds of years. So when I was 21, I wrote down my life as I would like it to be, right? The homes, the cars, the future wife, the, the impact 
right? The all the goals are your goals written down. You don't you have to understand when you write down your goals, that also helps your attitude and self-image because you're reading what you want your future to look like. So you're actually creating in the present today for the future tomorrow. And these are all things, by the way, you don't need to have 10 grand in a bank account to do. You can find paper, you can find a pen, you can get on YouTube for free, study, learn, and you can develop this, this mentality. And the last thing I'll say on, on, on this part right here is that I want you to start to act like somebody earning $10,000 a month or whatever your goal is. Maybe, maybe it's $1,000 a month. That is completely up to you, right? But when you act like you're earning what you want to be earning in 2023, what happens is, is when you go meet a prospect for coffee, they're not going to meet you where you are today. They're going to meet you at $10,000 a month. When you get on a Zoom presentation for your organization, they're not going to hear you where you are today, maybe with some credit card debt, which is totally fine. They're going to hear you at $10,000 a month. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why in 2011, you know, I was able to build a team of, it was 96,000 people because I had all of our top 20, 50 younger men and women all talking about where they were going, not where they are. They were talking about where they were going and people caught on to that vision. And that's what you've got to do, whether you're selling a weight loss shake or a coffee or digital education or skincare or keto bars, it doesn't matter. You got to be using this information and you will go out there and you will build an empire in 2023. Well, I can tell you, you did exactly that. I mean, all the stuff he's teaching you, even before. Even when we were working together, it yeah. was, skin, was skincare. You, I mean, you had that attitude, like you were already the top earner in the entire profession before you were. And everyone always gets it backwards. They're like, well, when you're not going to get to win until you start acting like that person now. And it's not fake until you make it. Like Alex was saying, you're not saying, well, I make all this if you don't, but how would you talk? He said it earlier, if you caught on, he, he talked about how he watched YouTube videos and he would pay attention to their mannerisms. He'd pay attention to their tone of their voice, their delivery, how they conveyed, how they communicated, how they walked, what their posture was. All of those things added. And I've got to say this phrase, because if you're in network marketing and you don't say the word fired up, you're not really in network marketing. Like if you're not fired up, after listening to that, then I don't know what's going to fire you up. So make sure that you're firing up and take some action. So a couple other questions came to my mind. And one of them was, I believe you've done the best job at recruiting the younger generation. And you really opened my eyes years to go to the younger generation because I was always told like lazy, spoiled, entitled. Of course, there's some of that. There always is. They don't want to work or anything like that. And I just remember Back in the day, um, I still remember a couple of different um, three-way calls where I would get an old school three-way call from Alex asking me if I'm available. And it's like, it's midnight. And I remember going down to his house and he wanted to do a meeting and the meeting didn't even start till midnight. Here I am married with four kids and I'm like, man, I'm in bed usually like two hours before. And I'm like, these kids are motivated, but... There were some things that obviously that you did and that you understood because I feel like the younger generation can be misunderstood because there's good and bad in every single generation. So when someone asks you, well, how do you recruit the younger generation? What would your response be? Well, first, I would I would be saying, who do you know? Because if you're in your, you know, I'm 33 now, you know, when I started at 21, it was a little bit different because I was living in a college campus. But even today, you know, we bring in a lot of it's not, it's not so much of the 18 to 20 anymore. It's, it's honestly mid, mid 20s, yeah. 30s and all that. But it's, it's saying, I don't know what a young people, you're, fr you have to ask the question, who do you know that goes to college? Who do you know that is a, is a highly motivated young man or woman? Cause they're, they're all over America. They're all over the world. Right. But you got to show people what's possible. Like if there was one like topic of a PowerPoint I would do on this, I would say showing people mm -hmm. what's possible. Okay. And you can do that by using other examples of, of younger people having success in this profession. You know, we actually teach our people, pull up people's Instagrams and show them how they're traveling the world at 23, 24. I mean, we've got young kid, young, young people that have done well in Europe. And we have like six of our younger guys, they all moved to Dubai. They're living in nice apartments and condos. So when you show another person their age, 
that that story and that person, it's going to build belief because, you know, seeing is what? Believing, right? So I would be using credible stories, okay, to show other people what's possible. And then I would just be, I would be super transparent with people, right? And not a lot is between I was 21 and 33, it's still pretty much the same thing. People are, it's probably even more so now. People, the, the, the college degree has become super devalued and I'm not beating down education. I have a four year degree. Like I graduated from Arizona State University. Okay. However, get graduating college and just merely getting a job and trading time for money. We all know if that's the only means of uh, cash flow income into you and your family's household, it is going to be a rough and tough life for probably 99% of those people, right? So you have to show people, hey, you can go be, be an engineer, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be whatever you want to be, do this on the side. And I tell people all the time, this is meant to be part-time. Like I actually get mad, not mad. I get upset when there's a close person to me and all of a sudden they quit their job. And I'm thinking, bro, you're making $600 a month. Get get to $5,000 a month. Like, oh, well, I see you do. I'm like, you're not me yet, Right. So the people, people forget majority of distributors in our profession, they're doing this part time, right? So showing young people, hey, you can take 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, number one, number two, showing them what's possible. And then, and then number three, explaining to them at age 65 in America, which is still one of the best opportunistic places to live and create wealth, right? Uh, for, uh, one percent wealthy, four percent financially free, and 95 percent are dead or dead broke. Okay, so do I want to follow the masses and do what they're doing or do something different? So when you kind of lay all of that out, it doesn't need to be in that maybe of, of an aggressive, you know, speaking tone. But you got to say, hey, by, by the way, you know, you're going to graduate. This is what it looks like. You can do this part time. Who knows? One day this might replace your income. Okay, look at this success story. Look at this success story. Look at this success story. And there's lots of men and women that you can show. Stormy Wellington. Right. Uh, Jesse Lee Warren. Mean, these are people not even in my company. Right. Use the industry. I, I do that, by the way. To this day, I will still show examples of people in other companies because network. it's 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 still one family. It's still one unit. That's why I speak at these generic events and stuff and it, it, for free. And it's fine because I want to see people win. I do trainings for other companies. I mean, I'm not lying when I say that I, I have done trainings for product based companies because I want to see everybody win. But everything I just said, that's what I would say. Show people what's possible. Good leaders have vision. Great leaders give vision. Think about that. Good leaders, right? I'm here. I'm committed. I'm going to be here in six months, two years, three years, four years, five years. But great leaders, they know how to give that vision. As you listen to Alex, it makes sense why he's done what he's done. Like you see how he's become better at articulating, conveying that vision. But it started with him being on YouTube and paying attention to every single little detail. And he'd watch those over and over and over again so he could study anything and everything he possibly could so he could become better at giving that vision. Because, yeah, it's great to say I'm never going to quit, but that's not enough. Simply not quitting is a step that's necessary for success, but it's not enough in the Mount Everest ride of, of your hike or climb to crush it. So last question what are some of because i know you, you're huge on personal development and the thing i like is you're also really big on like a lot of the old school classics i am i really what are, am. what are some of your favorite all-time classic books of all time that you would just say you've got to read this there's there's a lot um the power the what is it the ma the magic of thinking right right when you say that the magic, magic of, of thinking big magic of thinking big and then i gotta go to some of the ones that I were given before i had a hundred bucks in my bank account you know i was given rich dad poor dad in fifth oh, grade yeah. that's a good one just to learn not even network marketing just financial like health right um i'm bigger on the audios and videos but when it comes to books you know i've got think and grow rich sitting on my table. And it's, it's because, right, Bob, that's, he read that book every day for 65 years, right? And I still think there's lots of great principles in there. Um, think and Go Rich, Magic of Thinking Big. Uh, and then I got to listen, say, do you listen to books or do you more watch videos on YouTube or what would you at say? At this point, I enjoy what I'm, I'm, this is just my honest. I, yeah. I enjoy watching keynotes, to be honest. I've been watching a lot of like Ed Milet's I type in M. I let Kino. I type in uh, Bob Proctor. I like to watch Bob Proctor, my my coach, speaking at other like insurance organizations, just so I get a different like mm. energy from him, just in the point and shoot in his office stuff. So, um, 
I, I love t- 10X rule, man, by Grant Cardone. I know Grant is one of those guys where he's either like loved or hated and that and that's fine, but he has a lot of great principles in there and he's done tremendous things obviously as well. And then U squared. Like if I could give if I could give your audience one book, U squared by Price Pritchett. I think that I right there. Yeah, U squared by Price Pritchett. It's probably $3 on Amazon. Yeah, I'm going to put that. It in. is the idea of the quantum leap. And, you know, I've got, I've become like known for creating momentum because I've been in three companies and either for a short period of time or a very long period of time, I've been able to create and sustain momentum in those companies. Right. And I'm telling you price Pritchett's U squared. It's the idea of you're in the hotel lobby and you want to go to the 55th floor, but instead of going to four, one, four, two, four, three, you go from the lobby to the 55th floor. And it's like principles. It was written like in the maybe sixties, but that book, that, that, that thing changed my life as well big time well you know how to create momentum that's for sure and yeah i'm always trying to pick up new books and ideas and and um, one of the things that i've done the last couple of years that really helped me to hone in on learning is i pick a theme so i'm listening with intent right like for you you're looking at okay you're going to be a keynote for generic so right now your thing is keynotes and you're watching different people like bob speaking to insurance because you're like i gotta make sure my audience i'm talking to everybody and so right. You have a specific, you know, purpose. For me, I'm I'm going to write a book that's for everyone outside network marketing. My first first book ever. Nice. And so all of a sudden, I have all these concepts that I'm studying, and so I'm listening with intent and a purpose. And it's like my ability to absorb is so much higher because you're looking for it, right? Rather than just yeah, yeah, reading or or listening. Well, I want to tell you guys real quick. Book the event. It's one of those things you're not sure. I promise you, you won't regret it. I promise you it will be one of the highest energy events you've ever been to, but also with so many takeaways so that you can actually implement and execute. So you're not the broken know-it-all, which I know that you've already heard from Alex today. Uh, Give this guy a good follow. Uh, I know he's most active on Instagram, but where's the best place people can find you on all social media platforms? Yeah, Instagram is Alex Morton Mindset. And then I would say YouTube. You just type in Alex Morton Mindset. We've got, wow, I don't even know now. We've got hundreds of videos on there. Literally, you can you can watch me from 2012 in a living room. And then you can watch me in uh, 2019 in front of 30,000 in Marlin and, State. And he's got the best quality YouTube videos by far in the entire profession. Like, just insane if you pay attention just to the branding alone. Like I, I love it. So, well, I appreciate you, my man, for getting on for all of you go give him a follow, go find, I'll put in the, I'll put in the notes as well. Like the details for you guys to go find uh, his event and be there and go make it happen. All right. Thank you for your time, man. And uh, excited to do some more stuff together in the future. Let's go.